Believe it or not, this is day four of the Spark Kids Ministries VBS program. I'm Adam, and thank you for joining us today for the virtual large group component of our VBS program. Uh, we've been making our way through Bible stories and skits online each morning this week, as well as some crafts and lessons in person during the small group sessions that occur later in the day. Each day we've had a bottom line, which is kind of like the takeaway for the day from the day's lessons and activities. So Monday we talked about how Jesus told the story of the wise and foolish builders, and our bottom line was do what God says. Tuesday we talked about the Good Samaritan, and our bottom line was love others the way you want to be loved. Yesterday we talked about the man who built bigger barns for his grain, and our bottom line was love people more than things. Uh, today, as we get to a new Bible story and see what happens next with Norman, Diana, and the rest of the characters in the skit, we'll get to a new bottom line, which is trust God because He knows. Now, I'm excited to get things going for the next day of our BBS program. So, as usual, we're going to play our theme song to kick things off. Now, yesterday at this time, uh, I asked you to send in your mid-air pictures or just another silly face picture if you preferred. So, before we get to the theme song, here are some of those pictures that you sent in. Here we go. Let's get into it. Fade out. 
morning, teachers and students of Reseg. The future looks bright on this beautiful Thursday morning as the mighty sun makes its slow, majestic climb over the vast Aglettville Pine Forest. It has been nearly three weeks since the notorious Rotten Egg incident, and the Phantom of Reseg has been gratefully silent. One can only hope that the Phantom has moved on to torment the students of some other distant campus, rather than patiently waiting in these halls to strike again. In any case, let us take the time to enjoy these welcome moments of respite, however brief they may be. Until next time, here's hoping you have chocolate milk wishes and fish stick dreams. That's also the lunch menu. Yep, things are starting to look up. No more phantom, no more rotten eggs. And I just got my midterm grades back. They're looking pretty good. Even Norman seems to be fitting in. He's got a new friend. Harris Dugan, if you could believe it. Yes, things are really looking up now. I think the phantom can you do with it. Hey, Diana. Hi, Norman. Harris. Check this out. Wow, Norman, these grades are really good. Study, study, you know. And you didn't think you could pass. Well, they're just midterm grades. You're gonna be fine. Why is Jericho hiding? It's me. He thinks I'm the Phantom. All oh, loser. I'm really proud of you, Norman. Thanks. I was still a little worried about. It. I'm doing pretty good. This woman's been really patient, but now that she's sick and all. Uh, yeah, I right, I heard about that. Going to be all right? I think so. It's just a long recovery time. He'd probably be out of food. Whoa. Yeah, I just hope this new guy goes. Where in the world? So who they get to replace this Newman? Kind of a weird story, actually. Turns out every single algebra teacher. Then 50 miles of Agrodo came down with the same illness. What are the odds? I know. So they asked this old guy to come out every time. He used to be a teacher here at long. Oh, what's his name? Your host. Ah! What did you say, Norris? Who's taking over the algebra class? Your host. Ah! Well, 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 the G-Man's coming out of retirement, isn't he? Why do they? Because, Melvin, students would do so badly in his class that an F wouldn't be low enough. He gave them G's instead. You are sharp as a tack there, Norwal. Norman, but he, he can't be that bad, right? He, he's a teacher. He doesn't just give out S for him. G's, Noland, G's. Norman. I mean, sure, you're right. He's a teacher. I'm sure he has the student's best interest at heart. But then, after what happened to Trevor... Yeah. 
get the best of him. But you would never do that, would you, Lawrence? Why not? Norman? Norman. Oh no, Norman's having a meltdown. I've seen this once before when he thought he left his history paper on the bus. Not a priest. Norman. Norman. I'm quitting. What? I'm dropping out of recycling. I'm never coming back. I'm through. Norman, just, just stop for a minute. Take a breath. No! I will not take a breath. I knew this would happen. Why do I think I had a chance to succeed in school for exceptional people? I'm not exceptional. I am average. I'm going to take a breath. Maybe he's not as bad as you think he is. You're right. It's worse. If I stay here, I'm going to fail algebra. I'm going to get kicked out of school and I'm going to end up just like Trevor. So guess what? I'm saving you trouble. Reset. This has been seeing the last of Norville. Come Dee! I can't even remember my own name! Have you ever been worried about something? <laughs> I have. I worry about running out of blue paint. I worry about getting a drawing. Just right. I worry about these things. These things can be found anywhere. They scare me. They might even be in my shoes. I have to check my shoes to make sure they're not in there. We worry all the time. It seems like anytime something is out of control, we worry about it. But I'm not sure why, because worrying about something never makes a problem get better. In fact, it usually makes it worse. We've been talking about living inside out, and we discovered that if you want to be bright, you not only have to know what God says, you have to do what God says. You have to let what, what is showing on the inside come out to the outside. And in today's story, we're going to find out what God says about worry. So hopefully, that will help us deal with <laughs> Bob Loomis had an enormous head, and not just big, enormous. And it was getting bigger. Hey, Bob. What? What do you want, Frank? Can't you see I'm busy if I don't get this project done by five? I'm in big trouble. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. It's just that everyone in the office is a little concerned. About me, I'm doing the best I can. I work 70 hours a week. It's not about your work, Bob. Your work is fine. It's your head. My head? Yeah, your head. It's growing. Bob Loomis had a problem. He worried all the time. He worried about his job. If I'm late for work, I'm gonna get fired. I just know it. He worried about air pollution. We're breathing in harmful particles every day that we can't even see. You worried about money. How will I ever pay the bills this month? And every time Bob worried, his head grew just a little bit more. You mean my head is, is growing? Yeah, it seems like every time you get worked up about something, your head just inflates. Like a balloon. You've got to be kidding me. I need to see a mirror. Bob ran to the bathroom to look at his head in the mirror, his co-worker Frank close behind. I can't believe this. It's, it's huge. Now don't get too excited. Don't get so excited. Look at, look at my head. It's, what's happening? As he got more and more agitated, Bob Loomis's head grew right before his eyes. Bob, you've got to calm down. My head. I know, but you've got to relax. I'm afraid that if your head grows too large, it might, uh... What? I better not say. It, what? If your head keeps growing, it might... explode. Oh no! Bob? Bob turned to Frank, a worried expression on his ever-expanding face. I know something that can help you calm down, and maybe your head will go back to normal, okay? Uh, tell me. Think about birds. What? I know it sounds strange, but close your eyes and think about birds. So Bob closed his eyes, and even though his mind was filled with fear and worry, he tried really hard to think about a bird. Okay. Birds don't have jobs, do they? 
No, they don't plant or gather crops or keep food in a bank, right? What does this have to do with anything? Okay, now think about a wildflower. A wildflower? Right. A flower blooming on the side of the road. Think of that. <sighs> Fine. Bob imagined himself in a field of wildflowers stretching as far as the eye could see. Flowers don't have jobs either, do they? No, of, of course not. They don't make their own clothes or go shopping at the mall. Bob thought of a flower browsing for clothes in a department store, and the thought made him laugh for the first time in what seemed like forever. <laughs> Why are you telling me this, Frank? Open your eyes. Bob opened his eyes and he could see, once again, his oversized head in the mirror. Oh, look at that. Listen, Bob, birds don't work because God provides for them. And flowers don't make their own clothes because God made them more beautiful than kings and queens. So? So, aren't you worth more to God than birds and flowers? Bob thought about the question and he realized that Frank was right. God did care about him more than birds or flowers and he wasn't sure, but he thought he might have seen his head shrink ever so slightly. Jesus said not to worry, Bob. God knows what you need. And worrying's not gonna get me anywhere. Right. The Bible says to put God's kingdom first, do what he wants you to do, and then all those other things you need will be given to you. As the realization hit him, Bob Loomis's head slowly returned to its normal size. It wouldn't be the last time that Bob worried, but anytime he started to feel like his head was going to explode, he remembered the birds and the flowers and how much God loved him. Here's what God says about worry. It's very complicated, so listen closely. In Matthew 6, 25, I tell you, do not worry. Actually, that's not very complicated at all. Do not worry. You can't be more clear than that. Do not worry. But how? Oh, it's not like we want to worry. You don't want to be worried about school. You don't want to worry about whether or not your dad will find a job. You don't want to worry about trying out for the swim team or the school play or spiders. But we worry. How do we keep from worrying about things that are out of our control? Well, I guess we have two options. We can figure out how to control everything, which is impossible, or we can put our trust in the one who already has things under control. God, the creator of the birds and the entire universe, is in control. You can trust God no matter what. Trust God because He knows what you're going through. He knows everything. Trust God because He's bigger than your worries. Trust God because He knows what you need. It's easy to say, do not worry. It's not so easy to do. But take the weight off your shoulders if you can learn to let go of it, of the worry and just trust God. You know, when I look at this spider, I think, no, sir, no. I can get used to it. Note to self, Paris Dugan has, has eluded me once again. I still have no proof that he's a phantom, as I suspected. But sooner or later, he is going to slip up. And then, and then... My mind's made up, Diana. I'm leaving. I'm going to a different school. One where not every student is a rock scientist. But you can't! I've already got the transfer request. I've read it, i signed it, I just have to hand it to the principal and... So long, we say. Well, what did your dad say about it? Just what you expect. Try to tell me some parable, but I told him I don't have time for it. 
just doesn't understand the pressure I'm under. Nobody does. Oh, I don't understand pressure? You try having to be two different identities and keep track of them, and tell me about pressure. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... No, you're not the only person with problems around here, Norman. Everybody worries. You just seem to do it more than others. Does worrying so much ever do you good? No, oh, but... No, it doesn't. So why do it? Listen, Norman. You've got to get your worry under control. If you don't, it's not going to matter what school you go to. Your worry will follow you wherever you go. But... how? Well, do what I do. The birds. Think of the sparrows. Think of the way they sing. Their voices are loud and carefree. Sparrows sing because they're happy. They don't have to worry about what they'll do for food. If that's the way God cares for the sparrows, think about how he cares for you. Oh, that's great, Diana. But I'm not a bird. Okay, then let's think of another example. Think about the grass. Think about daisies blooming like crazy beside the road. The dandelion fields, sunflowers and posies, roses and bright marigolds. If that's the way God gives to flowers, then think of how it gives to you. I'm not a flower either. I know you're not a bird or a flower. That's the whole point. You're worth so much more. True, isn't it? God really does them. True if I get an A and out of Or a G. Or a G. I need to start trusting him. Never have. That's all I was trying to say. So okay. I'll give him. Yes, 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 yes! Thank you. You know what we should do? What? We should go and meet Mr. Hogarth for ourselves. He might not be as bad as people say. So I don't want to be my friend. Even though I'm a chronic Norman, you're my best friend. You don't think I reveal my secret to anyone, do you? No, I guess not. Come on, let's go find the G-Man. Secret identity, huh? No, to self. I've been driving up the wrong tree. I know who the Phantom is. All I need now is proof. So there you go. That's it for the large group portion of today's program. Once again, thank you for being with us today. If you're able to make it to small group, I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow at the same time for the conclusion of our virtual large group. It'll be a special one to wrap up the week, so make sure you don't miss it. So that's it for the first half. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.